everyone. My name is Bankoli Williams. I have been greatly looking forward to this opportunity to share, you know, the ideas that I have with you guys on this podcast called Soul Ish, dealing with your BS. I'm sure some of you are wondering what's BS, right? Yeah, it's what you think. <laughs> but beyond <laughs> that is the fact that we also talk about belief systems that people have that are responsible for some of the results that they're producing in their lives. And today we have an amazing personality and we have a twist to the way the conversation is going to go because there are certain things I have been thinking about <clears throat> that are responsible for the outcomes that people have. And if you consider the way the world is today with all you know, the drama, you know, um, the crisis going on in different parts of the world, I think that it is important to have conversations that help us deal with the issues that we're facing with our minds um, and with the results that we're producing out there. So today we'll be talking about the science of results. Mm -hmm. And the twist is that, you know, I have an amazing personality who I greatly love. She's like an aunt to me. Um, and she's going to be asking me questions, even as we have conversations, um, about some of these, my interesting findings. Right, guys, please help me appreciate the one and only Mrs. Oyaoye. Great, Banky. So good to be here with you. And I love twists. I've always been a great admirer of yours. I've been a student of yours. You've been my teacher, my mentor. I like reverse mentoring. <laughs> <laughs> In my mind, you're my mentor. <laughs> <laughs> and I am super excited to be here with you today to take on this twist. Great to be in the seat where I will ask you questions instead of you asking me questions. And I like your introduction. You used certain keywords I would want you to, first of all, clarify for me. I love soulish. I love BS for belief systems. And I love the fact that you said this year has been super amazing and you've had ideas come into your mind. Yeah. And because we know that ideas rule the world, yeah. I'm excited to hear about those ideas. So tell me what Solish is, first of all, and those belief systems, and then we'll go into the ideas. Well, uh, Solish is this interve intervention which I have developed to help people deal with matters of the soul. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's because I believe that the heart, at the heart of any results that anybody wants, right, is the soul. Without the prosperity of the soul, there cannot be abundance, mm. there can't be health, there can't be wealth. Um, and, you know, I had an amazing discovery over the last one month. Um, I've been going through a journey, a soul journey, mm. right? Trying to understand why the world is presently where it is today. Trying to understand why people struggle. Trying to understand, you know, this this crisis that's going on, what has created it? You know, what, how have we have, as human beings contributed to this collective consciousness that's producing these outcomes? And, you know, um, God particularly took me on a journey. I remember that uh, a couple of days back, not too long ago, you know, I was sleeping and in the middle of my sleep, I heard a word I'd never heard before, hmm. never. Um, and I, I know that in my sleep, I knew that that word was important. So I immediately woke up and I decided to Google the word. And it's a word called homeostasis. Okay. I had never heard it before. And that word captured everything that I'd literally been experiencing, you know, this season of my life, the journey that God had been taking me through, right? And, and basically it's a word that really talks about the regulation of your internal environment, void of any external activity. So it is such that regardless of what is happening in the environment, we need to begin to master what is going on internally mm. because that is the source of everything on the outside. That is what is responsible for the results and the outcomes that we see. And these are some of the things that I'm hoping that in the course of this conversation, I'll be able to shed more light on for people to be able to gain some measure of insight as to how to progress in life. Wow, that is super, super amazing. Funny that this is December 1, 2020. Yeah. And just today, I mean, for the past couple of days, about 10 days now, I've been studying what is called the spirit of opulence mm. by Thomas Troward. Yeah. And it just speaks to what you said about soulish being a matter of the soul. Yeah. 
Yeah. Because that's what the spirit of opulence is. Yeah. It's simply your awareness of your spirituality and your oneness with God. Mm. Mm. And if you say that the word homeostasis dropped into your soul, yes. into your mind. Now, you've never heard it before. Never. Never. That's amazing. Yeah. So, when we are talking about soulish matters of the soul and prosperity, what exactly does prosperity mean to you? True wealth. I think that that's an interesting question. I, I believe that wealth, first of all, starts from the soul, right? Um, you know, I'm a Christian, and yeah. I, you know, I, I read a particular verse in the Bible that says that you know, I wish above all things mm. that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. So prosperity on the outside is the effect of prosperity on the inside. So what I find is a lot of people think that the feeling of wealth is something that's generated from the presence of wealth. Hmm. And the truth is it is actually the other way around. And that's my recent discovery, even though I'd had an idea about it, but now I have a knowing, a conviction that the presence of wealth is generated by the feeling of wealth by recognizing the abundance that already exists mm. with your soul before you experience it materially. And, and it is so important because I find that a lot of people have the drive for wealth. Um, but one of the reasons that I went on this search was I was curious to know why is it that uh, you know people have the drive, but the drive hasn't necessarily materialized in abundance in certain people's lives. You know, I, I live in Nigeria, we live in Nigeria, and we talk about the hustle. We see people hustling on a daily basis, working hard, waking up early hours of the morning and all of that, you know, but all of that hustle has not necessarily translated in tangible results. And I'm an advocate of, of results. Evidence will terminate arguments. Show me your results, we'll shut up. Right, so there is so much external activity hmm. without taking into cognizance the state of your 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 spirit, your soul, the, you know, you know your your internal environment, and and what I have found is that that is your vibe. So there's something which I call money vibe. Hmm. So most people have money drive, but they lack hmm. the money vibe, and it's the fusion of the vibe and the drive that bring about the results. Pause, Bankali. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> I love that last statement. Most people have money drive, but they lack the money vibe. Yes. Now, I can tell you that with all that is going on, especially in Nigeria in 2020, with the current conditions and circumstances, with the conflicting, competing commitments, mm. I know that most of us, let me say, I have drive, I have money drive. Mm. But I just don't have that vibe mm. because mm. of all that is going on mm. around me. Mm. What do you think I can do wow. that, to that, get me into that vibe so that I can get what I want? Wow. We all want results. Wow, and, and that is such an important question because you know, it emphasizes the importance of that experience which I have had when I heard that word, because the word homeostasis talks about an inside job, hmm. that it starts from your internals. What I find with a lot of people is that they are working from outside in and not from inside out, right? So they need something to happen to them on the external for them to feel a certain way and for them to have an experience. But you see, God has given us this amazing organ called our brain, right? And when the brain is in action, it becomes the mind, right? And when our mind, right, our, our minds are, are functioning, right, the mind really doesn't know the difference between what is imagined and what is real. So people think that they need to have the experience, right, for them to feel a certain way. But what I found out about the mind is that you can simulate the experience and the mind does not know the difference. 
It's like watching a movie that has a sad ending, mm. right? We know that the actor is alive in real life. <laughs> <laughs> and we are crying but, on his behalf. <laughs> do you understand? The, the actor is smiling somewhere. He's made some cool millions of dollars or something, right? But, but in that moment, you feel like it is real. And guess what? The body feels like it is real. And that's why the body responds and it sheds real tears. Mm. So what does that mean? It means that when you simulate an experience, right, for your mind, the mind doesn't know the difference. It experiences it as a real-time experience. From science, we've actually found out that the same neurons that are fired up when you are having a real-time experience are the neurons that are fired up in the brain when you are experiencing it in, in your mind, mind, right? A study was done on, on, on some people, two groups of people. The first group of people were taught how to play the piano using one hand, mm -hmm. right? Over the course of about a week, mm -hmm. every day, they were learning how to play specific mm -hmm. chords. And they took another group of people who were not doing it practically, but they were asking them to simulate the experience in mm -hmm. their minds. So they were closing their eyes and imagining that they were learning how to play the piano using the same hands and playing those same chords, right? After a period of time, after a period of one week, they did, they connected their, 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 their heads, you know, their brains to Different. EEG machines, and they checked the neural, you know, pathways, pathways in their minds. And they found out that the same neural pathways that had been created by those who were doing it in real time was the same that was created by those who were imagining it, right? And that's the power of, of, of the mind that we have. So for you to have the money vibe, you must be able to simulate, you know, call those things that be not as though they were. Yeah. You must be able to create the experiences that you want to have in your mind as your present reality, right? What I find is that a lot of us are followers and Guess what? We wake up every day thinking yesterday's problems, mm. thinking the same thoughts, and the thoughts, you know, lead to emotions. The emotions lead to certain decisions. The decisions lead to the, to, results. To, to the results, right? Or actions that lead to results. And every result is an experience. Mm -hmm. Now, the reward of an experience is an emotion. So what happens in that moment is that we begin to feel like who we were yesterday, hmm. right? And that's because we started our day by thinking about the thoughts that we carried forward from yesterday. So we end up, because the reward of an experience is an emotion, we end up feeling the same way we felt yesterday, and that affirms to us that we are who we are, the familiar self that we've always known. But that familiar self we've always known is the person we want to break out of. Yeah. You don't want to be that poor person anymore. You want to become rich, right? But you are still feeling like that poor person. And that's because you are a follower of the thoughts of yesterday. Hmm. But for you to, to have the wealthy mind and to have that money vibe, you must be the leader who is the creator of your reality, who decides, regardless of my present circumstance or situation, this is where I want to place my imagination and my thoughts because I recognize that the mind doesn't know the difference. And once I create that experience, the reward of an experience is an emotion. So I feel, you know, the abundance that already exists. And guess what? I'm teaching my body on a chemical level what my mind knows logically. Wow. That's a lot for even me to consume as you speak. <laughs> So I'm trying to imagine what the person that is listening to this and watching this, what is going on in his mind right now. Mm. You mentioned that the brain in action is the mind. Yes. The brain in action is the mind. That yeah. means motion precedes emotion. Mm. Yeah. Motion influences emotion. Yep. Yep. So even though I don't feel like it, yep. I must act my way into feeling like it yep for me to enter that money vibe yep to attract what i want yep i still go back to the current conditions and circumstances where we are as we yeah, speak yeah 
it's not that easy for people who don't understand or who are not used to what we are saying now yeah. to switch that BS yeah. from the BS as they know it to the belief system that we are trying to say. Yeah. You mentioned that some ideas came into your mind yeah. in the course of a couple of weeks back. Can you share with us those ideas? What baby steps can we begin to take knowing that regardless of the situation around us, we are not the situation mm, mm. and we should not allow that situation into our minds. Mm. We should be the dominant energy yeah. in the space. Yeah. How can we begin to do that step by step, little by little? Beautiful. I, I, I like the fact that you use the word energy. Um, and, I, and I think that that is such a powerful word, right? Um, because I found out that where your focus goes, your energy, energy flows. flows, right? And focus is attention, Yeah. right? Um, and a lot of us don't even know what we are paying attention to. Hmm. And I think that that is such a... Uh, an interesting place to be, and interesting in inverted commas, because most people are thinking thoughts that they are unaware of, that are the root cause or causes of problems that they are facing, and they're trying to change those problems, not knowing what the root cause is. So I found out that the average mind thinks about 60,000 thoughts in a day, on the average, right? And from my research, over 90% of our thoughts are repeated thoughts. Wow. Over 90%. And 80% of those thoughts are negative for the, for, for the average person out there. So most people default into thinking past thoughts. Mm. So it's, it's very unconscious. You don't even realize it, right? So you wake up in the morning, right? For most people, do you know that 80% of the people who have smartphones wake up to their smartphones first thing in the morning by default? In fact, their bodies are so familiar with the routine that they run a program that goes against their will. Mm. So they will for something different, but the body is so indoctrinated into that program. So by default, my fingers know the location of certain applications. Absolutely. So I have gotten there. Take notes. When you wake up in the morning, you gain consciousness over time, mm -hmm. right? You don't, you don't, you know, it, it, you have that groggy feeling that you initially have. The consciousness comes with time. So the way you act is a default program that you are switching into. Mm. And your, your, your body is so familiar with it. It goes to those applications. You go to uh, whatever platform. And then you see other people's lives and their experiences and stuff like that. And that experience creates an emotion in certain people. For some people, it's an emotion of excitement. For some other people, it is an emotion that just leaves them feeling, you know, just a certain way, moody. Right? And what they fail to realize is that that emotion they experience is affirming who they are. Mm. It's that familiar person. So you mm. feel like the usual self mm. from experiencing that particular emotion. Say, oh yeah, I've kicked into the person that I know. And that person that you know is the person you want to change. You're not comfortable with him. You want to change that personality, but Guess what? You default into the old personality because you are running a program, a default program. Whoa. Right? So, and, and you see, the body always goes, you know, where the mind goes. Where the mind and, goes. and the mind can go, can default to a program or can yield to your will. But for most people, it defaults to a program. So the program tells you, you know, pick your phone, do this, you go there. Right? The program tells you, okay, get up out of the bed, you go out of bed. The program tells you, because you always see an image and then your body acts out. Oh, you need to brush your teeth, you, you do the same thing. And it's a fixed routine, fixed way you do things. Take a certain number of strokes on one side before you move to the other side. It's a program, right? And we have a lot of this. And 90 to 95% of our thoughts are the program. Jeez. 
right? And this is why people struggle. So with all the crisis, with all the negativity that's going on in the world, everyone has got to be very careful what they pay attention to. Because remember what I said? What you pay attention to determines where your energy goes. So if all your thoughts are repeated thoughts, your energy is defaulting into those repeated thoughts of what you do not want. So that's where your energy is going. And where your energy goes, your results will show. So ultimately, you will by default produce the same, same results, results that align with where your attention is being placed. Right? And, and, and this is the default that I see people you know, go, you know, go through. And it is important that we practice awareness. Hmm where we begin to recognize this program, where we begin to notice, you know, some of the thoughts that we default to that are responsible for the results that we have, right? Before, before you go into awareness, <laughs> yeah. let me ask you something. You mentioned that um, we give up foreign happiness for familiar misery. Mm -hmm. So people will often pick. Is it foreign happiness for family? We yeah. give up. Familiar for, misery? No, we no, give up foreign, foreign happiness, happiness for familiar for misery. Familiar misery. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's the truth. Um, and people don't realize it. People are addicted to being themselves. They want to change their lives, but they don't realize that on what I call a subconscious level, they have an addiction to, to the behavioral traits that keep them at the level that they are. Right, and, and I think that that is something so powerful because it's a fusion of thought and emotions that creates what I call a state of being or, you know, what some of us would call your personality. So your personality is, you know, what your thoughts, your emotions and your actions. It creates a state of being. So everybody has that state that when they get into, they feel like, I am myself, hmm. right? And people are addicted to that state of being. So they don't realize it. They, they, they like those behavioral traits and they want to change it, but there's an addiction to it. It just makes them feel like, you know, this is home. Right. So when something is new, it, feel, it feels like a distortion to the program that they're already used to. Right, yeah. so there, there'll be a restriction. Yes, there's that restriction. Because there's an addiction. Exactly. Takes me to my second question. You mentioned that where your focus goes, your energy flows. Yeah. So we need to pay attention to what we're paying attention to. Very true. And we also <clears throat> need to focus on our focus. Mm. You talked about the root cause of issues that when we don't address that root cause. And you talked about that word addiction. That's such a mm. strong word. Yeah. How can we help people to break that addiction mm. of the current programming that they have that stops them from living into the life that they want, mm. into mm. the results that they really do want, mm. yeah. but they are bound by the addiction. How Fantastic. can we break that addiction? So, such, a, such a powerful question. You, know, um, you see, it's interesting because we're all like computers, but we don't realize it. All of us, um, we're all... Well, like computers. Um, so imagine, I put out a post uh, a couple of days back, and, and even though it wasn't real, but you know, I wanted people to understand how these things work. Mm -hmm. So imagine that I bought a brand new phone, and the phone had no applications on it, um, nothing installed. And then I, I tried to operate it because I see my friends my friends can use Facebook and all of that. And I'm like, okay, I have a new phone. I need to start, you know, doing all these amazing things on it, right? And then I call you and I say to you, you know, I, I just got this phone. I spent this amount of money on it, but I can't access all the things that every other person can access right. on it. And then you come, you look at the phone and then you see that it's blank as in I haven't installed any yeah. softwares. You know, you're going to think that I'm crazy, but you haven't installed Facebook. How do you expect... TV that is going to work. Now, what people fail to realize is that in the very early stages of their lives, right, they are like a blank phone. Hmm. 
a blank phone that is installing programs for like the first seven years of your lives. That's why we don't remember a lot of the things that we you know, did as kids, right? How many people remember the day they were born? Mm. Nobody does. How many people remember their first birthdays or their second birthdays? We don't remember. So we were all unconscious, right? And to survive in this world, there are, there are basic sets of rules for you to be able to operate. So we needed to download softwares. Now, how did we download softwares? The brain has something called mirror neurons that literally mirrors what it sees in the environment. So a lot of us picked up traits just by observing our parents, but we didn't even realize it. It's like speaking English, for instance, right? None of us remembers our parents actively teaching us, you know, English language. We picked it up by mirroring, by observing, right? And, and that's how powerful your brain is when you're a child. Your brain is in what they call theta stage, right, as a child. So it is very receptive to suggestions. So a lot of us were programmed to, so we're installing all of those programs, right? So the real question we need to ask is what programs did you install that are running your life today? You want to know the programs that are running your life that you need to deal with? Just look at the areas you're struggling in. Look at the area of life that you're trying to produce a result. You have all the drive, you know, working hard, but that hard work is not translating into outcomes. Those areas are indicative of the areas where you do not have a program that's supporting that desired result. Hmm. So you have programs that will cause you to default into where you do not want to be, right? And you picked up those programs in the early stages of life, right? And, and you know, that is the first thing. What I tell people is that awareness starts the process of change. So you need to be aware of, of these, these programs, the conditioning that you have adopted and embraced as responsible for where you are. And I can give several examples in different areas of life that can explain this. So let's use money, for instance. So I, I like to make this thing very practical, down practical typical, maybe African home, right. where um, um, the, the family was exposed to lack right, as a child. Uh, so you maybe grew up in a home where your parents struggled to make money. And the little money they made, you know, they were very protective of it. So some, some of us, our parents were hoarders, for lack of a better way to put it. Yes. With all due respect to them, they had a thing for just piling and keeping stuff, right? Uh, so the, they got some silverware and they told you as a child that, see, I'm keeping it for the for day you that get your married. daughter. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and they just... They have a storehouse of things, and without them knowing, it's, it's actually the manifestation of a scarcity mentality. Absolutely. Thinking that there won't be enough for tomorrow. So, you know, there is him who withholds more than is necessary, mm. and it's what amounts to poverty. Now, that is the, 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 the display of, of a poverty mindset. And the parent is unconscious, but guess what? The child is in an unconscious state and it's like a sponge. He's, he or she is soaking that as the principle for how money works, even though it is flawed. Wow. Now, without them knowing, they might detest those traits, but because that's all they were exposed to, they will manifest it when you know, the time is ripe. Sometimes it might take a process of time. I'll give you an example. Some people, the trigger for manifestation is, for instance, marriage or parenting. So it's when they become parents that they discover that they parent like their own parents, right? But they picked up all of those things. So that, that, that machine that God has given us is, is a, a, a repository of, of all experiences waiting for the right trigger for it to manifest. So back to that person who grew up in that kind of a home. Now, later on in life, right, the manifestation of their own expression of that thing may be different, but it's still fundamentally the same principle. So now that person is very wary of debit alerts, mm. right? And, you know, anytime they make any amount of money, 
they are so protective of the money, right? They don't spend money on themselves, right? They don't allow money to pass through them. And you see, money is a currency. It has to flow. It has to flow. Money comes to you, but it should flow through you, right? It, av it avoids roadblocks. Mm. It doesn't like roadblocks. Now, that's the principle about money, which that person wasn't taught. Now, they've carried on that same program. So it is important that there is awareness. Right. And like I said, the way to become aware is to look at your life, look at the places where you have things easy. You have programs that support that thing, right? Look at the place where, or the places where you're struggling in. Could it be that there are programs in your life that are working against that thing? You don't have programs that support that particular thing that you want to change. Now, once you become aware of the program, then it's, it's now how to address or how to deal with it.